So there we have it. Here's the, the nails there and there, and in this piece there and there. You should have been able to hear it. I could hear it even with my hearing protection on, the difference in the sound when the, the carbide teeth of my blade hit those nails, but it didn't slow it down, didn't have any problem cutting through it at all. Hi there, I'm Rich, and we're here to talk about the Evolution Rage 5-S table saw. A saw that I have to say is probably one of the most revolutionary table saws to hit the consumer market and the construction market in years. This saw has features that one would not expect to find on a saw of this price, but only on a, a saw of a much higher price. Let's take a look at it. The uh, Evolution Rage 5S table saw comes really well packed in a rather large, very sturdy box. And uh, to be honest with you, when I was taking it out of the box, I thought I had the box upside down because the saw was upside down. But the printing showed that I had it right side up. Well, there's a good reason for that, that the saw was or sitting upside down in the box. They packed it that way intentionally because the first thing you've got to do is put the stand on the saw. It doesn't come with a stand assembled. The saw itself is well assembled. Now, it's probably going to have to be some adjustments. I haven't seen a table saw out of the box yet that you didn't have to make some adjustments to. That's not a problem. But I've got to put the stand on the saw or I'm not going to be able to do much of anything with it, okay? So there's, there's quite a few pieces of tubing here. There's the hardware. Uh, the book does come with instructions. Little tiny drawings, so I hope you got good eyes. And uh, we'll just see what it's going to take to put this thing together. I've had the Rage 5-S table saw in my shop for a couple weeks now. I've had an opportunity to work with it and play with it and see what it'll do. And I have to say, I'm very, very favorably impressed with this saw. Compared to what I was using before, this is a, a, a quantum leap better. Now, this is considered a contractor's portable table saw, and the table saw I had in here before was a contractor's portable table saw. So we're talking about pretty much apples to apples, but when we're talking apples to apples, we're talking uh, a, a cheap mushy apple to a beautiful uh, red delicious or something like that. I mean, this is, this is so much better. To start with, it's bigger, okay? I would say it's really kind of pushing the limits of what you consider a portable saw. But the weight makes it possible, and the stand, which has wheels on it so you can move it like a hand truck, makes it e fairly easy to move around if you've got to move it to a job site or to another part of your house for a remodeling project or anything like that. The stand does have to be assembled when you get it out. Uh, not surprising. I mean, they've got to fit it into the box. It was not that hard to put together. Uh, I had a couple little snafus, but it was more like uh, me just trying to read the drawings. And it wasn't because the drawings were bad either, okay? The drawings were fine. Uh, but when you start doing drawings of having to put, ha having to put tube parts together, it's a little harder to read them at times, okay? All the hardware was there, a few extra pieces, everything was necessary, there was nece that was necessary to put the stand together. Once I got it on the stand, it was easy to set in place, it was easy to move around. Uh, it's light enough that it's not a, a, a problem to move it. Now, as you can see, my shop is a little bit crowded and I've actually got this sitting at an angle to everything else because that gives me the best material flow. The overall table size, when it fully extends, is they got right here on the table 47 and a quarter by 23 and 3 16 so there's an extension on this side an extension on this side when this extension is fully out you've got enough room here I think it was 25 inches of space between the blade and your fence so you can rip right down the center of a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood so it's plenty big enough uh, my I grew up using my dad's old craftsman shop saw and this is at least as big, if not maybe a little bit bigger. I'd say when, it, when the extensions are out all the way, it's a little bit bigger than his saw was. So that's really nice. The table itself, the table is cast aluminum. Now, they went with aluminum for weight. That makes sense. Uh, 
This is supposed to be a portable saw, so they went for aluminum. It's honeycombed on the bottom, which is really interesting. Adds a lot of strength with for very little extra weight. I've checked it with a straight edge. It's very flat, and that's a critical, okay? But the most critical thing to me for any table saw is right here, the fence. The first thing I want to see is, is the fence solid? So I took the fence out and set it on the saw. It stuck a little first bit the first time in going in the track. Not surprising, but... This moves very, very smoothly, and, and the good thing is, is that as I'm moving it back and forth, that end of the fence is going right with me. It's not wobbling back and forth. My old saw, uh, which was a contractor saw that I, a contractor's portable table saw that I've had for over 10 years, uh, it w would wobble. So when I locked down my fence, I really didn't know if I was parallel with the blade or not. I was either parallel or close to. This one, it's parallel every time. It's uh, no matter where I position it, it's it's solid. And to me, that is the the most critical design element of any table saw. They got that right. Um, there's also a uh, an additional fence that comes with the table saw to attach on here. There's a couple holes through the fence so that you can use this when you're cutting thin materials. And, and that's a really nice little addition. It's it was not necessary. Uh, I've cut thin materials without that. But having that there makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, and it's, it's, it shows the amount of thought that was put into this product. The fence can be adjusted as needed for position. Uh, you can even take the fence and put it back here before you get to the blade and use it as a stop block for doing uh, multiple cross cuts with, with the miter gauge, okay? Um, they say everybody says uh, that, that knows anything about table saw safety, you should not use the fence and the miter gauge together because of the possibility of the material getting bound up between the two and, and kicking it out. I agree with that. The only exception to that is you can use the fence with the miter gauge as long as the material clears the fence before it gets to the blade, okay? So the white guys usually do that is they just attach a block of some sort with clamps, or, or they may make a, uh, a, a auxiliary to their fence to uh, allow them to, to do that, this comes with it. You don't need to make it because it's already there. And it's out of extruded aluminum, it's sturdy, it'll last, okay? So the fence is a, is a, is a winner as far as I'm concerned. It's a well-built fence. Uh, I can take it all the way out to the end here, and, and, and I maintain the same perpendicularity, uh, smooth movement, the whole bit, okay? The next thing that's, that I saw about this saw that really, really impressed me is the slider. Now, I've looked at sliding saws before. You find sliding saws in cabinet shops, and the cheapest sliding saw that I can find on the internet is $3,600. This saw's got a slider built in. This portion of the table right here is designed to be a slider. And there's a a knob here on the bottom, which is a quarter turn fastener to allow you to, to loosen up the table, okay? This portion of the table. And you can take your, your miter gauge and lock it in place and, and do a slide cut, okay? Why is that important? Well, nowadays you see a lot of, of woodworkers, especially woodworkers that do fine woodworking, using a table saw sled for miter. Uh, miter cuts for cross cuts of any sort. They'll, do, they'll either use a, a square one for doing just regular cross cuts or they'll do a miter sled for making like frames or mitered corners on boxes or something. This has got that capability built right in with this with this sled, okay? Uh, now, the, the miter gauge itself, okay, let me pop this loose. Okay, so here's, here's the miter gauge, and this looks just like it does on any other saw, okay? You've got 60 degrees of swing on the other side, and uh, it's marked off in one degree increments. Okay, well, anybody that's done woodworking for any amount of time knows that one degree of accuracy is not enough to do a miter corner. You need to be down around a tenth of a degree of accuracy, and there's absolutely no way you can do that by eye, okay? So how do you get that degree of accuracy... With, with this miter gauge. Well, it's really easy. Grab a speed square. Loosen up the handle here so we can swing it. Set the seat speed square on the edge of the table. This edge of the table we already know is, is parallel with the blade, right? 
boom, I've got a perfect 45 degree miter right there. And now I can lay my material up against here. And make an exact 45 degree cut. Okay, let me take that a step further. Since this is a slider, the, the miter gauge not only comes with this fence extension, and, and you could make your own fence extension to be even longer, but you know, at least it comes with one, and it also comes with this clamp. So I can take and set that material in place at 45 degrees. Now it's clamped to the sled, and with one hand, I can make absolutely sure that's, that's going to be exactly where I want it to be, and it's going to get a, a perfect miter cut every single time. Folks, that's, that's amazing. Okay, in, in, the, in a saw that sells at the price point of the saw, to have that kind of capability, to me, is amazing. That's something I expect to see in, you know, as I said, a $36,000 saw or up, more like usually five to $7,000 is the price range you're looking at to get something like that. All right, so let me show you this too. I, I've already gone, you saw me do it, where I, I use my, my speed square to set my 45 degrees. Well, now I need to go back to 90 degrees. Again, I can use my speed square. Set it against the edge, set it against the front of the fence, and get it, get it tight in on both of those. And now I'm an exactly perpendicular and when I take my piece of wood and I set it in here, I know that my cross cut is going to be absolutely perfect. This is a well-designed saw. This feature, this capacity alone of having the slider on there is something that professionals would pay a lot of money for. And it comes with the saw. Now, to, to use the sliders, there's two important things. Number one is, is that the, the miter here has a lockdown to the slider. So I tighten that up and they move together. Okay, that's important. You don't want to try and use the slider with the miter capable of moving. Okay, the other is that, as I mentioned earlier, there's this little quarter turn control down here on the bottom when it's, it keeps the fence from the slider from moving, allows the slider to move. So you've got either way. Okay, these two things set this saw apart from any other. Uh, similar saw that I've seen, or what we would call similar, portable contractor saw. It's interesting that they've gone larger with this one than, than rather than smaller, because what I've seen is a trend towards smaller and smaller contractor saws. And okay, that's fine if you're a contractor and you're not trying to do fine finishing or something like that. If you're doing, uh, maybe putting in kitchen cabinets, but if you want to get things absolutely perfect, if you want to do that really fancy woodwork that some guys will do. You need a saw that's got this kind of capability. You need what essentially would be considered a shop saw on the job site. And this gives that capability. For those of us that are using it in a workshop, this gives me a lot more capability than most shop saws that I might buy. I can't put a, a big cabinet saw in this shop. I don't have the room. But I can put this saw in my shop and I can be sure that it's going to work well and it's going to give me accurate cuts. That's what I love about it. It's a great saw. All right, so what else have we got going for us? Of course, we've got a, a blade guard. Everybody's got a blade guard, right? The blade guard here is connected to a, a hose, which also connects in the back. And we have a dust extraction system built right in. The blade on the lower side is shrouded all the way around. And here on the upper side, it's shrouded by the blade guard. And so you just hook a, a shop vac to it, a small shop vac to it, and whenever you're cutting, you can, you can extract the dust and keep from making a big mess at the same time. That's a nice feature. It's not an essential, and it's not something that really sets the saw apart. It's not the only saw that does that, but it's nice to have that. Uh, my previous saw, I had built my own dust extraction, which was kind of kind of sort of worked. Okay, this has got it built in. Um, as I said, the, the table extends on both sides. Um, it has built-ins on, 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 on the saw storage for components. Here underneath this side, there's the wrenches for tightening and loosening the blade. Um, there's also storage for the fence. If I'm not using the fence, I can get that out of the way and put it right on the saw. There's storage on this side. 
including for a, a push stick that comes with it. Um, so everything can stay right here and, it, and it's convenient to work with. The motor on this saw is a 15 amp motor. Uh, my previous saw had a 12 amp motor. Now, amperage doesn't tell you what the horsepower is, okay? Uh, but as a comparative type thing, uh, motors are, are built in such a way that the more current it draws, the more power it's producing, the more torque it's producing. So this motor is probably not running any faster than that other one is, but it's producing uh, about 25% more torque. That's important when I'm trying to cut through difficult materials like very hard woods uh, or thick woods or, or um, even, even a sheet of plywood. It can be, make a difference. Okay, It won't bog down. Um, so that's, that's really valuable. So what we really need to see, though, is how well does it cut? I mean, ultimately, all this stuff is great. But what we really need to see is, how does it cut? Okay, I've gone ahead and set my fence for a one and a quarter inch cut. And to do this, I had to remove the, the blade guard. That's typical when you're doing really close in work like that. What I'm looking for here isn't so much how well does the one and a quarter inch. I want to look at this other side because I should get a strip that's roughly an eighth of an inch thick on this side. And I want to see how consistent that strip is. Okay, I was wrong. It wasn't an eighth of an inch thick. That looks more like about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I'm not measuring this with a micrometer. I'm just measuring with my eyes. But that looks very consistent. That tells me that, that my, my fence is straight and true to my, my blade. And uh, I don't have a whole lot of, of chatter in there on the, the blade. That's important too. As I look at the cut edge down the, the, the thicker piece, I do see a little bit of of saw marking here, but not real bad. I, I could go ahead, if this was a, a shelf or something, I could go ahead and put on some of that uh, iron-on uh, hardwood um, edging, and I wouldn't have to sand this beforehand to make sure it's smooth. It is smooth enough that I could attach that on there. One of the claims they make about this saw is that it can cut through nails, so that has a lot to do with the blade, but also has to do with the saw's power. So I've Pound a couple of eight penny finish nails into the end of this two by four. Sorry, I didn't do 16 pennies. I didn't have any available. And we're going to cut it off and see how well it goes through those nails. So there we have it. Here's the, the nails there and there, and in this piece there and there. It went through them. You should have been able to hear it. I could hear it even with my hearing protection on, the difference in the sound when the, the carbide teeth of my blade hit those nails. But it didn't slow it down, didn't have any problem cutting through it at all. All right, let's give it a little more of a challenge. This is a piece of one and a half inch wide, eighth inch thick steel strap. Well, it went through that pretty easily, too. How about some two-inch diameter aluminum tubing? You know, I kind of feel like after that steel strap, this is probably too easy, but let's give it a shot anyway. Yep, that cut easy. Now, I will have to say, even though I've just cut steel and aluminum both on this saw, I'm not sure that I'd want to do that all the time, okay? Uh, so the sparks from the steel, uh, the, the blade guard underneath where it's capturing all the sawdust, uh, that's made of plastic. I don't know how about the, the hot sparks will do with that. That's probably not really great, uh, but it obviously can do the job. They say here on this little label that the maximum steel thickness you can cut through is a quarter inch. Well, we did an eighth of an inch, so we could obviously do something considerably thicker and, and harder to cut through. 
Okay, so let's try and use the miter gauge to cut a miter. And again, I'm going to take my speed square and use it to set my fence on my miter gauge at exactly 45 degrees. Fast and easy way to do it. And I've just got two pieces of, looks like one by two here, that I'm going to cut a, cut a miter on. And we'll see if it comes out to 90 degrees. Okay, so we're going to take our two cut pieces here and put them together. And I'm using a digital protractor here to measure the angle, which is coming out to 90.1 degrees. So we've seen the Evolution Rave 5-S table saw. We've looked at the major features. We've cut material on it. Now, there's a lot more the saw has to offer. I haven't gotten into all the little details about how this saw is put together, but it's a really good saw that I would highly recommend to just about anybody. If you're a home woodworker, if you've got a small woodworking business, if you're a, a, a cabinet maker, if you're a, a, a contractor, and you need a table saw, this is a good choice to make. The features that they provide and the quality that's gone into this saw is something that's going to serve you well just like it's serving me well. I'm looking forward to a lot more time working with this table saw.